Hello everyone. So let's discuss about another five question in part two of CSAT 2020 question paper discussion. So now let's start with the discussion of another five question. First question. There are three statements S1, S2 and S3 are given below followed by a question. C is younger than D but older than A and B. C is younger than D but older than A and B. Okay. C is younger than B but older than A and B. From the first statement we can draw this figure. Right. This is from the first statement. C is younger than D but older than A and B. Fine. Okay. Now statement number 2 says D is oldest. See everyone from statement number 1 also we can derive D is oldest. So statement number 2 has no significance. Right. I repeat from statement number 1 also we can derive D is the oldest. So statement number 2 has no significance. Now let's talk about statement number 3 S3. A is older than B. Okay. A is older than B. It means what? A is older than B. It means B is the youngest. So hierarchy level is B, A, C, D. This is the hierarchy level. Fine. Okay. Who among A, B, C, D is the youngest? Obviously, B is the youngest. Right. So which one of the following is correct in respect to the above statements and the question? Okay. Uh, S1 alone sufficient? No. S1, S2? No. S2 and S3? No. S1 and S3 together are sufficient to answer this question. Yes. See everyone, this question again belongs to data sufficiency DS. Right. And the ideal solving time for solving this question is around 40 to 50 seconds. Right. And this is actually a very simple question. S2 has no significance. It is like extra statement which is given to you in the question. So question can be solved with respect to, I mean, with the help of S1 and S3 alone. Fine. S1 and S3, I mean together are sufficient to answer this question, right? So this is the question. Fine everyone. So again a very simple question, right? Based on data sufficiency, right? Let's talk about another question. Okay. Question says how many integers are there between 1 to 100, 1 and 100, which have 4 as a digit but are not divisible by 4? Okay. See everyone, this question belongs to number system, right? And a very simple question. How many integers are there between 1 to 100? So 4, 14, 24, 34, 44, 54, 64, 74, 84 and 94. Right. So these are 10, uh, 10 numbers, right? Because they are starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right. So there are 10 numbers. They are starting from 0 and going up to 9. So there are 10 numbers, right? And after that, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48 and 49, right? So there are again 10 numbers, right? But anyways, the question is asking here 44 is like getting repeated. That is another thing. But the question is being asked, which have four as a digit, but are not divisible by four. So friends, the number which are divisible by four, please try to figure out those numbers which are divisible by four. So this number is divisible by four omit this number, this number is also divisible by 4, this number is also divisible by 4, this number is also divisible by 4 and this number is also divisible by 4, right? Okay, here, this is divisible by 4, this is divisible by 4 and this is divisible by 4, right? Now, please try to count the rest numbers. These are three numbers, these are three numbers and this is one number, so total seven numbers here. 8, 9, 12, 10, 11 and 12. Right. These are five more numbers. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So total numbers are seven plus five, which is 12 numbers. Right. So 12 numbers are there from one to 100, which has four as a digit, but they are not divisible by 
4. Right everyone? So this question belongs to number system only and max to max ideal solving time for this question is 70 to 80 seconds because here you have to write a lot. So 70, 80 seconds maximum. Right? You have to write and then count. Right? So maximum you can take 70, 80 seconds for this question. That's it. Not more than that. Maximum. Right everyone? Fine. So the correct answer is 12 and the question belongs to number system. Okay. Now let's move to another question. Next question says the average age of a teacher. Friend, this topic is average, right? And this comes under the category of quantitative aptitude or you can say basic numeracy, right? So question says the average age of a teacher and three students is 20 years. Okay, if all the three students are of same age and the difference between the age of a teacher and each student is 20 years. Okay, fine. Let's say this is student one, student two, student three, and this is teacher, right? So all the students are of same age. Question says this, right? Question says, if all the three students are of same age, fine. So let's say they all are of X years and the difference between the age of a teacher and each student is 20 years. So obviously the teacher will be of X plus 20 years, right? So some of these four will be what? Some of these four will be 20 into four because the average of all these four is what? 20. So the sum will be 20 into four, which is 80 years, right? So three X plus X plus 20, which is 80 years. So obviously four X plus 20 is 80. Then four X is equal to 60. And then X is equal to what? 15 years, right? then x is equal to 15 years, right? What is the age of a teacher? So teacher is what? x plus 20, right? So 15 plus 20, which is 35, right everyone? So age of a teacher is 35 years, right? So this is a very simple question of average and uh, the ideal solving time for this question is maximum 60 seconds, right? Maximum 60 seconds, not more than that. Okay, everyone, fine. Simple question. All right. Okay. Now let's talk about the another question. Okay. Next question says a person bought a car and sold it for rupees 3 lakhs. If he incurred a loss of 20%, then how much did he spend to buy the car? Okay, fine. See everyone, this question belongs to percentage, you can say, or profit and loss. In fact, I should say this question is from percentage. Right. Or you can say profit and loss. It's fine. See everybody, 20% loss. What is this? 20% loss means SP equal to 80% of the CP. Right? Everyone, 20% loss means what? SP is equal to 80% of the CP. Fine. So, 3 lakhs is equal to 80% of CP, right? Okay, so 100% of CP. So 80% of CP is equal to 3 lakhs. Then 100% of CP is equal to what? 3 lakh by 18 to 100, right? So this is 3 lakh 75,000. Okay, fine. That's it, right? See everyone, for me, question, for me, this question will take hardly four to five seconds, right? For me, I mean, while reading the question, I can solve it, but it's okay. You guys are not so experienced in quantitative aptitude. So you can say for you, this question will take around 30 to 40 seconds, but not more than that, right? Maximum 30 seconds, right? 30 seconds include the reading and the solving both. Right, maximum 30 seconds, not more than that. Okay, everyone, fine. So uh, again, a very simple question belongs to percentage or you can say profit and loss, right? All right, so now let's talk about the next one. Okay, two statements, two statements S1 and S2 are given below regards to four numbers. These are four numbers PQRS followed by a question. R is greater than P and Q as well. So from the first statement, we can draw this. R is greater than P 
and q as well we can't say anything about p and q so r is greater than p and q as well s is not the largest one see everyone s is not the largest one so s can be anywhere s can be here s can be here s can be here or s may be equal to r also s is not the largest right so s can be here right or s can be between p and q right or s may be equal to r also right okay s can be anywhere question says s is not the largest one and friends one more thing the question is not saying all the four numbers are distinct right the question is not saying they then these numbers are distinct numbers right the question is not saying right so it may be that two of them are equal right okay so here uh, we can't say anything about the like r is equal to s or not fine or r is greater than s or s is less than i mean s is greater than r nothing can be said about the i mean uh, uh, the order of s fine s belongs to where anyways so among four four numbers p q r s which one is the largest see which one is the largest so nothing can be said about uh, which one is the largest because r may be equal to s also right everyone fine so uh, i think s1 and s2 together are not sufficient to answer this question right everyone so this question belongs to ds and uh, this is a bit controversial question i mean uh, you have to think a lot <laughs> you you may get confused also during the examination in this question but i think the correct answer is d option is the right one and the ideal solving time for solving this question is around 40 seconds right that's it right i guess uh, correct answer is d right okay fine now let's talk about the next question all right friends so this part is over uh i'll take another set of five questions in the next part right all right thanks for watching everyone thank you thank you